Yeah, I was talking to someone from that area, uh, Stan Norrit. I had a chance to interview him uh, a couple weeks ago. And what happened was I haven't been able to get a hold of him since the hurricanes hit. And I hope that he is okay. He and his family is okay. But he was telling me some stuff about that was happening down there that they were starting, there was a group of them, they were starting to be self-sufficient. And now that this hurricane's hit, it's almost like they have to start right back at square one. Do you see that in the United States where groups start to be self-sufficient or no longer or move themselves from the grid and all of a sudden the government doesn't like it and then just moves in and just does something to destroy them, to send them right back to uh, sort of like they have to work within the system? Well, the problem is, is that uh, the, the people in the United States are so so uh, poor right now. They they really don't know where to start to be self-sufficient. You know, they have to rely on the government for uh, you know assistance for health care if they can get it. I mean, the, the government is cutting back. I mean, I I I, I just think back to the day uh, when Grover Norquist, who was the big economic, uh, he's really a, he's a financial Nazi. Uh, he said that the uh, government has to be uh, uh, shrunk to the point to the size where it's so small it can be drowned in in, in a bathtub. Now this is a guy who basically is has consulted. Uh, he's not a member of the Bush administration. He's a very very good friend of Karl Rove, and he's consulted uh, with this administration. And he's now very close to the Mc, uh, to the McCain campaign. So we'll see more of the same. I understand it. It was people like Norquist who basically convinced McCain to to bring on uh, Sarah Palin on the ticket. So she obviously is one of the believers in that you don't you don't worry about people you just let them fend for themselves uh, whether they want to or not. I, I think most Americans want government intervention. We see that on Wall Street, this idea of liber- people going out to live in you know uh, mountainous areas and and, and creating. I, I don't think most people would even go for that. And also that leads us right into the next question. Uh, you wrote an article which talked about how the Klan, KKK, and other white supremacist groups have been tied to one of the advisors for Sarah Palin, who's the vice president uh, candidate for the Republican Party. Well, even better than her advisor, her own husband, Todd Palin, is, was very much involved in this Alaska Independence Party. Uh, the Alaska Independence Party uh, is part of a, a group of uh, parties in the United States, secessionist parties, the largest one of which is the, called the League of the South. Now, they, they're neo-Confederates. They want to they wanna see the restoration of the Confederate States of America. Uh, these are uh, out and out racists. They can say whatever they want about, you know, that their only, uh, their only interest is in preserving Southern heritage. Southern heritage is slavery. Uh, Southern heritage was, was, uh, all about, uh, uh, Jim Crow laws during, uh, after Reconstruction. So, uh, now the thing with Palin is, um, and, and the reason the Alaska Independence Party finds common cause with the League of the South and other similar groups is that um, um, they want to create, they, they don't want to reverse the uh, situation where Alaska uh, becomes uh, independent, uh, which probably would have happened had Russia retained it. Uh, but uh, they don't want to see a native Alaskan population running uh, things. They, want, they see Alaska as a, as a uh, homeland for, for white people. Uh, as a matter of fact, Palin herself has referred to the Inuit uh, people and Aliyah, People of Alaska as mukluks and and uh, she's called them uh, Arctic Arabs. So she's she's an out out and out racist, uh, uh, and she goes along with this idea that if there's an independent Alaska, it would be a homeland for the white supremacists. And also, there's an, uh, when I did a uh, past uh, uh, interview with a gentleman, uh, I was t- he talked about how Microsoft had been uh, stepped in to help out the Catholic Church and it paid off some of its debt. At the same time, it put uh, it started to put its records on the computer. And uh, recently, I remember I ran into an article that you wrote, and it talks about uh, the Microsoft chief has been given uh, head of state rights at the United Nations. Could you tell us a little bit about that? Yes, I, I covered the U.N. General Assembly meetings last week in New York, and um, uh, Bill Gates was there, basically given uh, uh, head of state privileges. He was there at a news conference with Ban Ki-moon, the Secretary General, and Gordon Brown, the British Prime Minister. Uh, he was running all around town. Uh, basically being fed it as this, uh, as a, you know, and I said to somebody, I said, I, I think the U.N. Uh, must have made a terrible mistake. Micronesia is a full member state of the U.N., not Microsoft, but the, the way Gates was treated up there, it, it was clear that he was being given uh, head of state privileges. Uh, he was pushing this concept of the Millennium Development Goals, which he said it, he loves those. They call the MDGs. This is really just an attempt to recolonize about you know, probably well over 100 nations 
Uh, you get them to sign on to these requirements. They must do this in health care. They must do that this in the, for the, the, their uh, economy. And then they, they, that's, a, that's basically a bribe to get them to, uh, to sign up to these uh, Millennium Development Goals. And, and that they have to sign up to those and meet those goals in, in order to qualify for um, economic aid. It's sort of like means testing for welfare recipients. So what they've done is they've turned that process uh, into a, a similar, like there's these nations around the world uh, that have been uh, exploited for centuries by the West, and now you're going to do means testing for them to still get economic gain by getting them to sign on to these draconian, uh, these dr- dr- draconian um, um, uh, milestones they must achieve. As uh, as the new prime minister of Nepal, uh, who's, a, who's the head of the Nepal Communist Party, Maoist, said, he said, look, the poor countries of the world can't even think about achieving these Millennium Development Goals. Basically, these MDGs are part of this whole Bilderberg, uh, Davos, uh, uh, Global Trade, World Trade Organization uh, nonsense, and uh, and it's really an attempt to, as I say, re- recolonize many of these countries. Not not with governors from France or 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 Britain or even the United States in charge, but you know, basically lick spittles for. For these, uh, you know, local people who are doing the bidding of these uh, these Western powers, and we see that with Uribe in Colombia, uh, we see it with uh, probably three quarters of the leaders in Africa and a fair share in Asia. They're nothing more than, uh, you know, they're basically puppets for the for the Western nations.